should there be a distinction between rape as a crime committed by undisciplined fighters in search of sexual satisfaction on one hand, and rape committed with the explicit goal of harming a community and its social cohesion? Or do the two always go together in a complex situation? I think it's quite hard to make a distinction between the two. I think violence on, on the, in the way that it's perpetrated in a conflict setting is, is quite ruthless. Um, there's, there, it tends to happen, it can happen at, at night, it can happen without warning. Um, it, can, it can be sort of premeditated and, and systematic. Uh, but it can also occur in the course of, of of conflict. It can happen not only as a as as a as what you've described as a weapon of war, but it can also happen in in humanitarian settings, um, where it's committed by not only by armed individuals but also by members of the family. Um, there can be instances of domestic violence can seriously rise in a huma humanitarian setting. So it's quite difficult to make the distinction. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, of course, on armed men, specifically in the Democratic Republic of Congo, committing rape against remote rural women, members of remote rural communities. But that sounds a bit counterintuitive when you think about it, because rebel groups usually, well, often, shall we say, rely on rural communities, on their ability to function, on the social cohesion of these communities, on their ability to grow food for survival. And there, the example of the Cuban Revolution, for example, comes right away. Fidel Castro and his guerrillas, you know, making friends with local peasants and things of that sort. So that sounds counterintuitive because we get all these reports of armed rebels in Congo attacking villages, Luvungi, for example, and for days on end raping men and women, children, and things of that sort. What's going on there? Well, the situation in Congo is incredibly complicated. Um, and I think what you see is women targeted by armed groups, but also by government forces. The, the situation is, is very difficult to explain, but what we are seeing is that those communities that are particularly remote are targeted. And there's a good reason for that. The reason is that those women and men and children are not protected. There is an adequate protection there. There's very, very little in the way of policing there to protect those women and, and people from sexual assault. And so they're very easy targets. Um, what's going on? Well, people are being targeted in, in communities where they are vulnerable and they have very little recourse. Um, we 